Welcome back and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Now, Uganda's representatives to the 5th Assembly of the Regional Legislature, the East African Legislative Assembly, were elected earlier this week. Now, the nominations and election of candidates to the Regional Assembly has attracted growing attention over the years. However, in all the excitement around the selection of representatives, very little is ever said about what Iyala actually does or what the representatives since they are expected to do now to help us light on some of these issues we do have Jojo Dongo who has just been elected for the second term as one of Uganda's representatives to the East African Legislative Assembly good evening sir and welcome to talk of the nation thank you well uh, on a lighter note and also to you know for clarity purposes we would like to hear from the horse's mouth exactly what transpired or how the election went because from the outside, it appeared like it was chaotic, a lot of drama, some were crying, laughed and all of that. So we'd like to hear from you exactly what transpired during the election. Um, the elections that took place really is a reflection of um, all the elections that take place in the country. Usually on the final day, there's excitement, there's anxiety, there are tensions. The intensity of the environment is almost palpable. So uh, what you saw on Thursday is really a normal election um, situation. Yes, um, there were incidents um, that transpired outside, but I think it was because a member was not fully informed about a decision that had been earlier on taken by the presiding officer who is the Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament. So that's why you saw what uh, we saw. Yeah, what you saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. <coughs> All right. So, uh, like I earlier said, nothing much is really said about <coughs> what Iyala exactly does. So, I would like you to give us an overview of what the East African Legislative Assembly is all about for the benefit of the viewer. Now, the East African Legislative Assembly is one of the organs of the East African community. Uh, the structure of the East African community uh, mirrors the structure in our, gov in, our, um, in our countries. So you have the executive, which is represented by the Council of Ministers and the summit, together with, um, uh, with, uh, with the secretariat. And then you have the, the, the East African Court of Justice, which really represents the the, 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 the justice, um, uh, how could I call it? The, the East African Court of Justice, then you have the East African Legislative Assembly, which is the legislative arm. So there are three arms, basically. Uh, so the East African Legislative Assembly is the parliament of the East African community. Mm -hmm. Our functions are basically three core functions legislation which is passing of laws regional laws the other one is representation amplifying the voices of our citizens and the third one is oversight we oversight the implementation of the laws of the commitments protocols that um, uh, you know the, and all the instruments that bring us together as a, as, as a, as a partner states that's the other third core function of the assembly. Now, there has been some confusion. Um, there are people who can draw a difference between the regional assembly and the national assembly. Help some, us draw the distinction. Some of them actually think that we, the members who are in the regional assembly, are, are also members of the national assembly. It's not the case? That's not the case. That only happens with the with the Pan-African Parliament, which is a forum. But this is a legislative assembly. The difference is that the Pan-African Parliament, for example, passes resolutions. And those resolutions are then captured by the national uh, parliaments and are debated. But they do not pass laws. But the East African Legislative Assembly is the only uh, regional assembly that in the whole of Africa that legislates, it means we pass laws. laws. Now, when we pass laws, 
our laws, uh, in terms of the hierarchy of laws, mm. once we pass a legislation and it's assented to at the regional level, all the other laws in the partner states that relate to that specific legislation are supposed to be amended to be consistent with our regional... Aligned. Yes, has to be aligned so that it reflects the regional position, the regional law. So uh, that's why our legislative process is... Um, so at the end of the day, you're the, you're the final man. Yeah, but in very specific terms, because the treaty does not give us powers to legislate on everything. Oh. The treaty gives us specific areas which we consider as our scope of cooperation in the current dispensation. So we legislate on those areas. For example, I'll tell you, that we do not legislate on matters that touch on the constitutions of the different partner states. So if there is a specific piece of legislation that is introduced in the House, it must pass that test that it does not contradict or affect the constitutional positions in our different partner states. Because the different partner states still uh, operate as sovereign states we are not yet in a situation where we, we are one country. We still maintain sovereignty, sovereignty. in our different partner states. Right. So our legislative function is restricted hmm. to that uh, our areas uh, uh, of uh, to those areas where the, the treaty the defines. Treaty. So we also f uh, have to. It's a delicate balance of what works regionally, and yet at the same time being sensitive to the sovereign constitutions, um, constitutions yeah. uh, of the partner states. All right. Yeah. Well, that is a preamble of the East African Legislative Assembly at large. So yes. now you, the representatives, I understand you're going back for the f uh, to the fifth session for the second time. What role do you play while you're at the assembly? Well, you, we are legislators. And our, um, I, I, I usually want to say that our legislative function is informed by two things. Um, and and I, this is just for description purposes, not really for anything. But there are those pieces of legislation that we say are supply driven, in our opinion, because they are, you know, sponsored by the executive. Um, the executive usually comes up just like parliament, mm. uh, the cabinet comes up with uh, legislations. So even for us, we have uh, the Council of Ministers, in this case our executive, prepares bills and presents to the assembly. But there are also those um, bills that are introduced by private members that are informed by, you know, public interest legislation, for example. You know, if there is... Um, uh, say civil society has petitioned the assembly on very specific issues of regional concern, then we raise them as private members' bills and process them. Uh, the only th difference is that uh, from our own experience, and I think I, I am, I'm talking about this because you want the public to understand yes. what the assembly does. The, the, uh, fr um, in the last five years, my experience is that private members' bills find a lot of difficulty being assented to because, you see, the, it has implications and there is a principle of consensus that is required for a bill to pass the legislative test. Uh, so, so all the partner states mm. need to agree with a specific private members' bill then it, is, uh, then it can be passed into law. But usually the ones that are fast-tracked are those that are sponsored by the, by the executive because by the time they're brought in the House, mm -hmm. they have had consultations, broader consultations with the different uh, uh, partner states. Well, Honorable, as we conclude this conversation, just in a nutshell, how would you explain the, to the average Ugandan the importance of this assembly? And also, you can highlight or your thoughts on the future of the regional assembly, just in a few words as we conclude this conversation. Can you come again? Uh, uh, how would you explain to an average Ugandan the importance of the Iyala in their different aspects of their lives? 
the assembly is the one that passes laws. And those laws are the ones that reflect the aspirations of East Africans. Okay. They're the ones that facilitate our integration. Um, we, we pass laws on trade because yeah. we want to facilitate trade. We pass um, laws on, 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 on rights of, of, of citizens, like now we have the, uh, the common market protocol that was passed. We have to come up with laws that facilitate travel of East Africans across the different partner states. Now, the future of the assembly, I think this assembly is going to be even more robust, more viable when we go into a political federation. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable George Odong, who has just been elected for the second term as one of Uganda's representatives to the East African Legislative Assembly, just getting to help us understand the role that IALA plays and what it means to you, an average Ugandan that is watching us right now. Well, that's it from Talk of the Nation. We take a break and return with NTV Weekend Edition.